up, everybody, and welcome back to the What the Fun Show. Today, we are continuing our Halloween series, talking spooky about season. the big bad Michael Myers in our spooky season. And you heard the whisper. I have Justin with me. How are you doing today, Justin? I am here and uh, running much faster than Michael in this film. Yeah, that's good. Glad. <laughs> Gosh. All right, uh, listeners, if you have not heard any of our Halloween stuff, today we are reviewing Halloween Kills. We already have a review, sort of a retrospective, a love letter to the original Halloween 1978, and then a full review of Halloween 2018 on our podcasting feed, as well as our YouTube channel. So go check those out if you have not seen that. Please leave us a review on Apple iTunes. We would really appreciate that. Give us some five-star love. We just got to have it. And if you're on Spotify, go to the mobile-only app, and you could leave a star review there. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, like the video, and comment down below and let us know what you thought of Halloween Kills. If you're listening to my voice, we do have a Rings of Power Episode 7 review out, so go take a look at that. And next week, we will be reviewing Halloween Ends, the brand new movie in this new continuity of Halloween. So oh, good. man. Yeah, I'm ecstoed. I'm ecstoted. I'm ecstoked. I'm ecstatic. Stoked it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Very interested. Yeah, very. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so Halloween Kills, Justin. Oh, boy. This one. Um, I think it's pretty divisive. Um, we'll get into a lot of the decisions that they made. Um, as you know, I am the biggest Halloween fan that I know. I have some issues with this movie. Um, but I also, I also think it's just a fun fun movie um as far as uh michael myers goes as far as the halloween franchise goes so let's get into it it is directed by david gordon green again written by the same team danny mcbride david gordon green scott, scott teams obviously based on the john carpenter deborah hill characters and stars jamie lee curtis judy greer andy matichuk will Patton, thomas mann anthony michael hall and james jude courtney and Nick Hassel reprising their roles as The Shape. Mm -hmm. This came out in October of 2021, and it had a budget of $20 million, cheap. And it grossed, yeah, a little bit cheap. And it grossed $131.6 million at the box office. Now, a lot of things go into that. This was a simultaneously released movie on Peacock. So that's probably why it doesn't have the box office that, you know, the Halloween 2018 did mm -hmm. um, as far as budget to box office. So I personally really enjoyed it releasing to uh, Peacock. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you did. It was kind of nice not to having to go to the theaters in 2021. Um, but you know, this this time around for Halloween ends, it is doing the same thing, but I'm we're seeing it in theaters, you and I, and then I'm gonna subscribe to Peacock to watch it again, you know, that type of thing. So what did you think of uh, you know, that budget, that box office? What do you got? It's stellar. Uh I'm okay with it. I, I think it was a good gain, uh for sure. Uh and I'm okay with this Peacock uh slash movie theater uh tie-in kind of thing going because when I go see a movie in the theaters, uh, like I did with Black Phone recently, uh, you know, you go see it and then you're like, I kind of want to watch it again, but I don't want to pay the extravagant price to go see it again. I'm already subscribed to this. I can just watch it at home, get the theater experience day one, enjoy it and then come back and watch it again uh, before it releases on home video. That's always beneficial. You're able to critique it better uh, by seeing it a second time or if you really enjoy it, see it again and not have to pay that extra price. Yeah. I mean, Peacock must have paid a lot of money to get Halloween kills and subsequently Halloween ends on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think that they could have just done a theater release for Halloween ends specifically, but Halloween kills, I was okay with it. I was able to stay home, watch it on my nice TV with Halloween ends. Like the, the Halloween fan in me wishes that it was just a theater only just to kind of see the, the popularity that Michael Myers brings. Mm -hmm. But ultimately I love the fact that I could go watch it in a theater and I could go sit at home and rewatch it like right away. Yeah. I actually really enjoy that. So, all right. Um, spoiler free review, get into it. Halloween kills, Justin, 
you just rewatched it this morning, I believe. Um, or at least some of it. What do mm-hmm. you got? Uh, it has a lot of high points, but it also has a lot of low points. Uh, I've got some gripes with it. Uh, but as a film in this continuity, it did okay. Uh, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm still excited to go see ends. I'm, I'm excited to see where this story leads. Uh, and the characters and acting in this did a, did a very well job. Good job. I'm okay with that. I think that, you know, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis reprised the role, obviously, and she did a phenomenal job. Uh, some questionable acting here and there, but for the most part, her character was um, the way it was supposed to be done. And also, Michael didn't run, so I'm happy with it. Didn't run in 2018 either. Um, so, yeah, it Halloween Kills had a lot to live up to. It really did. I mean, 2018 was such a phenomenal sequel mm-hmm. to the original movie, and then the original movie is obviously a classic. But uh, the reason why I like Halloween Kills a good amount is because this is just a straight up like, I, it, okay, it's not as good as Infinity War, but but hear me out on this. Hey, you. What's that? What the? What are you doing? Who, me? Do you want to be spoiled? No? Well then. Stop it. Get some help. So you don't feel like this guy. Instead, let it be a surprise. Oh, I like surprises. So go watch the thing before you move on in the podcast, okay? Alrighty then. Like Infinity War had the villain winning, right? And it had the and it had all the heroes, you know, at their wit's end. How am I going to defeat Thanos? And then Thanos actually wins. This is the Infinity War of the Halloween franchise. Like Michael is he's an unstoppable force. He's just killing, killing, killing. And ultimately he wins in the end. And that's that's kind of why I enjoy this movie. Because Spoilers. sure. Um <laughs> yeah. Uh a little bit, sure. Um, but Michael, he is he is an unstoppable force in this, and I really like it. Michael in this movie is perfect. It's everything else around it that and I'm assuming you do as well. That's where I have grapes with, <laughs> you know, it's just Michael is, a, is awesome in this movie, but, but it's a lot of the other things that are involved that just, oh man, um, we'll, we'll get into. So let's get into our spoiler territory. If you have not seen Halloween kills, please go pause this uh, podcast and go watch it. This is your official spoiler warning. <laughs> What do you got? What are you laughing at me for? <laughs> uh, uh, and that was your official spoiler warning. Uh, just so you know, if you're still here, uh, Michael Myers wins in the end. Uh, so I know the plot. Mike, go ahead. <laughs> Gosh, I did sort of spoil it, but it's whatever. Sort of. We're done. <laughs> also, Infinity War spoiled that, too. Yeah, yeah, that one. Anyway, on October 31st, 1978, Deputy Frank Hawkins. So it 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 actually opens up with uh, Frank Hawkins being found uh, after he was run over by Dr. Sartain and stabbed in the neck. And he's found he's actually alive. And I'm quite surprised, to be honest. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they they find him and they do a flashback, Justin. And I got to say. This flashback was so good. It is it is one of the best openings to a movie that I have I've seen. I love this flashback to Halloween 1978. It 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 shows what happened that night, how Michael got captured because we we mm-hmm. did not get that in Halloween 2018 and so they give it to us here. Yeah, we kind of alluded to it back on our review of 18. Uh you know, obviously Dr. Loomis was standing there saying you need to kill this guy. And and someone else, the sheriff, is like, no, we need to, you know, imprison him. And that's really where we could have put an end to it. No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> right there. But uh, you know what happens in the story. Uh, obviously, Michael is incarcerated and then breaks free. And now we have kills where he's on kind of like his prime time. I think that's what this movie really does for me. For Michael, this is his prime time. This is the killing, slashing, murdering that we all 
um, as horror films love to see, uh, you know, and I think it really does define his character. It shows his no remorse. It shows his, you know, unstoppable force that Mike mentioned as well. It, it really shows how powerful of a character he is with no real motive which is what I love about this continuity. Uh, he doesn't have yes. that. I need to kill Lori, you know, if Lori gets in the way, which in this, in this continuity, we've got Lori wanting to fight Michael, wanting to kill Michael. It's her job yeah. to put an end to it. No pun intended again. So it's not really him seeking her out, you know, and I like that a lot. I love it so much. And Michael really shines when he's doing what he does best. Yeah. And this flashback just, serves that purpose right it, it fills in a little bit more gaps that like it it shows that michael is not actually in it to kill Lori specifically he is just the essence of evil you know and, th and that's what that's what you get from the monologue that you see from donald pleasance as dr loomis in the original movie he is he looked into this person's eyes and it was pure and simply evil and mm -hmm. that's i agree with you completely the continuity is it's perfect in that the change was awesome. I'm so happy that they retconned everything um, because, because here we get evil Michael. Like obviously he's evil in the, you know, in the first two films in this continuity, the original in 2018, but, but here we truly get this unstoppable force. Um, mm -hmm. But this flashback is awesome. They, they did such an awesome replication of the mask. Um, it looks the, so good too. Like it looks amazing. Exactly the film grain that they put on it, you know, on top of it to make it feel like you were back in 1978, the recreation of Haddonfield from that night, obviously the recreation of, of the Myers home from the original movie as well. Just spot on. Um, it was so good. Um, yeah, that flashback was probably one of my favorite scenes in all of Halloween history. So, all right. 40 years later. Um, also the, the guy who plays, Dr. Loomis was so good. Yo, was that him? It wasn't Donald Pleasance. It was, it was an actor. It was I mean, perfect. Donald Pleasance is dead. It was, yeah. it was literally perfect. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, I don't know where they got that. Uh, exact. Yeah. Doppelganger. Trying to, trying to find so him. Well. Um, hang on. I'm trying to find him. It See, was. like, I'm, I'm not the biggest Halloween fan, but I can still notice when a character looks exactly like the original mm -hmm. character. Uh, almost. So it was it was Tom Jones Jr. who played the character. Mm -hmm. And then Colin Mahan did the voiceover. So he really? did the voice. Um, so, yeah, just flawless execution of, of bringing Samuel Loomis back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, so, all right. Um, 40 years later, we get back to Halloween, October 31st, 2018, a direct, you know, this was kind of cool. This was a cool design choice because it harkens back to the original Halloween to the original Halloween two, mm -hmm. where it is, it takes place in the same night. So we get a direct continuation of Halloween 2018. After being stabbed and left to die by Dr. Ranbir Sartain, Harkins, Hawkins is found. By Cameron Elam, who calls an ambulance, Hawkins regrets not allowing Michael's execution from that flashback and vows to kill him. So meanwhile, Tommy Doyle celebrates the 40th anniversary of Michael's imprisonment along with fellow survivors Marion Chambers, Lindsay Wallace, and Cameron's father, Lonnie Elam. Now, Lonnie, Lonnie is, if you don't know, in the original yeah. Halloween, Lonnie is the character that after tripping Tommy Doyle and his pumpkin, Lonnie's the carrier there that runs by that fence and Michael stops him. He grabs him by the shoulders. That's yeah. who Lonnie Elam is. Yeah. Classic uh, character. There's also the, um, I know this is getting into ends, but the uh, daughter, the, the, the one girl that was babysat, she's going to be in it uh, from the original Halloween movie. You know what I'm talking about? Lindsay Wallace. Yeah, Lindsay Wallace. Yeah. She's in, she, she's in this movie. She's she's in ends as well. Yeah. She, yeah. She makes a return, which is yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's here too. Um, but they're commemorating okay. the, the 40 years yeah. of Michael being imprisoned at the bar. Uh, and, uh, there is, is, is the news broadcast here? I think it is at the beginning here where they kind of get a shot of one of the imprisonment, uh, one of the 
people that are in there. Uh, so they talk about the bus crash and they talk about uh, there are two, I believe, two different inmates that are unaccounted for. Uh, yeah. And they and show Michael a face. Michael Myers and this other guy. Yeah, they show a face of an inmate, uh, which leads this bar to believe that is Michael. Uh, <laughs> ensuing chaos throughout the rest of this film. That starts yeah, we'll, it. That's the first little we'll thread get to that. that. Yeah. And it's, Let's get to the firefighters, though, because yeah. this scene was awesome. So I, first, I want to I want to hint at one of my gripes. Why is Marion Chambers hanging out with Tommy Doyle and Lindsay Wallace? They don't know each other. Well, like, you, you I, know, sometimes I understand that they're commemorating after, the anniversary. Yeah. But like, why? <laughs> well, you know, they were all affected by um, 1978. So I know, but it's, I don't it's think there was. Me. It's, it was you know, weird. Let's go out and have weird. a good time at a bar and, you know, celebrate Michael's. Yeah. Thing. Um, so Tommy Doyle, uh, Tommy Doyle takes, um, also, uh, question for you down in the comments, Paul Rudd's Tommy Doyle from Curse of Michael Myers or this Tommy Doyle, who you got <laughs> Ant-Man. anyway, yeah, man. <laughs> um, so yes, Justin firefighters are responding to Lori Strode's burning house, inadvertently releasing Michael who, um, Lori, Lori should have thought of this a little bit better that she shouldn't she have, have stayed created. there. She should have stayed there until it burned to the crisp. Like I don't, all the way down. I don't know. I don't know about stayed there or how about not create a fireproof like area that he could actually go into. Well, like, I think, I think that if you are dead set on accomplishing this task of killing Michael Myers and you trapped him, your plan worked, you would want to see a body. You would want to see the end result. You would want to put it to rest uh, and leaving to go to the hospital probably wasn't the best idea for that. But for storytelling, yeah. haha. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> just, yeah. Anyway, um, so Michael, Michael's still alive and he comes out and Haddonfield is done for. <laughs> <laughs> <He's pissed. laughs> he is so mad. This scene is so good. Uh, his fight against the firefighters. Um what did, what did you think about this scene? Uh, this is your first view into kills. When you first watch, you know, the beginning of this film, you see the flashback. You see like, OK, cool. We're getting story bits. This is showing Michael um, in his prime. Like I said, this is prime time zone it's here. Prime. He is he is pissed. He is angry. He is upset at all of Haddonfield. Uh, and this is going to show how much brutality he is going to have in this film in 2018 we got a lot we got a lot of brutality but not to this extent kills the name says it all he is going to destroy anyone and everything in the most grotesque way possible uh throughout this film so if you're squeamish yeah fans i'm uh, it this is a grossy one this is blood everywhere this is gruesome michael myers is not just simply stabbing one person and letting them drop he is going all out with his kills in this movie uh, and with the firefighters, they're holding weight. They have axes. They have saws. They have yeah. things to save people alive, saves, save people's lives. And Michael decides, I'm going to take these tools of of saving people and use them to take lives. Uh, and that is cinematic wise. Huh, amazing. Uh, the action. It was, comes, I it loved was epic. It. Uh, yeah, this like axe through the skull, all kinds of stuff. Saw yeah. through the brain. The problem with it this was, film, it was absolutely epic. Um, I, I just like, it's just the variety, um, mm-hmm. it, 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 the, in which he kills these firefighters is just so good. Um, he's thinking on his feet. He's a showman again. Like he, he just wants, uh, he just wants to destroy these people, um, and destroy them. He does. Yeah, definitely agree. Uh, I think that they, they went a little hard on the blood in this film though. You know, for keeping it true to actual atomic, what is it? Anatomy? Anatomy? <laughs> I I don't like if you've seen Sweeney Todd with Johnny Depp and you see the blood squirting. That's not really what happens. That is not what happens. And Halloween Kills kept that same staple of we're gonna squirt blood everywhere. Uh, it I'm looks okay great. With it. Looks great. <laughs> you know, spraying on Michael's face as he kills people and stuff. But I just don't. Uh, it's too much, too much, man. Nah, He's supposed disagree. to be grounded to okay. earth and be a real person, right? 
Well, I, I mean, we could talk about it right now if you want, but there's got to be some sort of supernatural thing going on here. Um, I mean, spoiler <laughs> alert, this guy gets destroyed in this movie uh, near the end. And well, Lori really says, like, you know, uh, the more he kills, the more unstoppable he becomes. Yeah. So obviously mm -hmm. that is the supernatural at its finest. Uh, yeah. He becomes more evil and more dark and more unstoppable. So there is the something at play there for sure. But anyway, he slaughters all the firefighters. Uh, Lori, Karen and Allison are taken to the hospital. Lori undergoes emergency surgery and Michael kills Lori's innocent neighbors. He just shows up in their bathroom somehow. Um, <laughs> not somehow he planned it. Um, he needed a, another weapon to go terrorize the rest of Henfield and um, uh, here's an, here's another great, I, I wish. So you could very clearly tell that the thing around her neck was not her natural neck. Like you could tell that You're it talking was about the, the lady that got stabbed with the light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could yeah. tell that that was a pouch of blood yeah. and prosthetic. And I, I didn't think that was done. Well, the kill on the other hand was brutal and like the kills for these two people were just were so good, you know, as far as horror films go. And so, yeah, that was, that was unique and cool, but like you could tell that as she's, as she enters the scene, like it's, it's, it just wasn't, wasn't the best uh, costume design because you could mm -hmm. tell that it's just like a pouch of blood there. Um, yeah. I, I can see that. Uh, I also like this scene though, because it doesn't only show the brutality, but it shows that Michael kind of is that showman that we we know and love uh he lets the lady live dying on the floor watching as she murders her boyfriend or her husband uh and just keeps throwing knives in him like is he looking for a perfect knife or is he just like stabbing to stab uh we don't know and i think i think he's just stabbing to stab this guy's evil man like he's he's just he's just wanting to uh strike strike any ounce of evil that he has into my, this person. My gripe you know? with this film is not the blood sack on her neck. Uh, it is <laughs> the, the same, fact that yeah. the fact that she undid the latch on the door and could have ran out, but decided to hold her ground. Uh, and yeah. I would not have. No, no, it's Michael. Uh, I would, I would have pulled a Cicero and I would have gotten out of there. <laughs> yeah. Legit. Like you had the door. There was nothing in between you and him. He was on the yeah. other side of the room. He doesn't run. Right. So, Open the door and go. Tommy, Marion, Lindsay, and Lonnie learn of Michael's killing spree through a wireless emergency alert. So this is what Justin was already talking about. The bar patron, uh, Vanessa, supposedly encounters Michael in her car. I, like, like we've already talked about, some of these characters are just annoying, unnecessary. Um, and <laughs> Vanessa and her husband are are one of those. Um so she, her and her husband are about to leave this bar. This is when they get that news. And there is somebody in her car and she thinks it, it is Michael because of mm -hmm. all the news and all the pandemonium that has really started within the bar. And she goes back into the bar and just creates even more pandemonium. Tommy Doyle grabs a ham or not a hammer, a sorry, bat. a bat. And he's like, He's like, this guy terrorized me in 1978. I'm going to terrorize him now. Mm. And this is where you get the start of, of the mob the uh, chaos. mentality, yeah. the chaos. Yeah, uh, definitely something to look out for. It's going to be a through line through the entire movie. Uh, you get a lot of it of not only are, is Michael affecting lives of people and killing them, but he's also affecting the mental state of the entire community. Uh, and that's something to think about. Uh, him being a force to be reckoned with, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just a person killing. It's the thought uh, that is causing people to go mad. Uh, yeah. So this is interesting. You know, obviously we get these characters that uh, could live, could die. Some do, some don't. Uh, most of them die. But uh, you've got <laughs> them getting up, walking up to the car. You know, Tommy walks up to the car with the bat and kind of stands his ground. And the face of the person... That was in the uh, in the TV announcement, who's not Michael, but they think it's Michael, is in the car and he decides to drive. And we get some terrible acting here when he drives past them 
a car squeals off the road and, and dodges. And then he drives out of scene, out of view, camera view. And you get Tommy Doyle as he crashes off screen. Tommy Doyle does this like, and I hated it. And it takes me out every time I see it. I've watched yeah, it many times. Some of the, and he's just like, some of the Ooh. acting's not good. Like, <laughs> as if he was going to get hit by an explosion or he was like yeah. dodging an explosion when it's far off in the distance. Yeah. Some of the some of this design choice that they had was is really rough. And, you know, some of the some of the legacy get like Tommy is one of the legacy characters that I have mm. an issue with anyway in this movie. Um, mm. just the way that they had him portrayed. Um, I think the actor did for the most part, a good job, but, um, sorry, like, if you're not watching the YouTube, I threw my arms up out of like surprise and like scared yeah. <laughs> uh, for the, for the listeners. <laughs> but anyway, that. Tommy incites this mob, um, to be a vengeful, uh, Haddonfield and hunt down and kill Michael. Um, at this point, Lori, um, Allison and Karen at the hospital, they don't know Michael is still alive. So Karen is eventually informed of that. And she does decide to withhold that information from Lori to allow her to recover. Allison, however, finds out and she's like, I want to join this mob. I want to kill this guy. I want to get in on this action. Michael dies tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and Cameron, her ex-boyfriend, does show up after bringing, uh, Cap, you know, Captain Hawkins, uh, d you know, Deputy Hawkins to the hospital. Um, he sort of kind of orchestrated that. And they get reconciled. Um, Allison is told by Karen to sit your butt down and stay in this hospital. But again, Justin, Karen is talking to the the guards and, like, trying to beef, beef up security Mm -hmm. for the hospital because she still thinks that Michael is Michael's in it for Lori, but he's not. And I'm glad, you know, uh, <laughs> I love the hospital scenes, you know, calling back to the original second film, but he's not going after Lori. He's going after the community and anyone that stands in his way. So, yeah. uh, he could make his way to the hospital, which a character does make his way to the hospital later. Spoilers. Uh, but it's not Michael. <laughs> And everyone is yeah. going crazy by then. So we'll see what happens there. But this is another thing that I did not like is Laurie and Hawkins both awake in the same room and reminisce about their former relationship. I'm OK with them talking, but police officers are taken to a separate wing of the hospital, not near other pedestrians and other normal people. They're not kept in the same location for their own safety as police officers. I know that's wrong. Whatever. That's what they do in real hospitals. That's what they do. So. They would have never been sat to like a bed length away from each other, regardless of what their crime, what, yeah. what they were healing from. I'm I'm OK with it for the immersion of the movie and the character development. But I mean, you're all right. It's it's outside the norm. Yep. Um, anyway, right. Allison does join the mob. Uh, Laurie and Hawkins both awaken in the same room, reminisce about their former relationship. And the mob sort of continues while warning the Haddonfield community to stay inside their houses. Mary and Vanessa and her husband, Marcus are in a car while, um, while Lindsay uh, is out checking with a couple of kids, these couple of kids, they torment uh, the two, the couple that lives in the old Myers house, mm -hmm. um, completely renovated. Um, and yeah, uh, these kids, a uh, little callback to Halloween three, they're wearing the masks uh, from the original movie, but Michael shows up and this is probably the worst, like acted and killing scene of the whole movie. Um, would you agree? Uh, so you're talking about, I've got a knife, uh, that scene <laughs> and the golf club. Uh, yeah, I, um, I mean, is that the scene? Like, when, uh, yeah, just when when they're in the car. Um, oh, you're you talking know, about the car itself. Yeah, uh, the car. Oh, I thought you were going to the um, the Myers house. Uh, that's later on. So yeah, I don't. You know, like I'm gonna. Sh this is when this is my gripe, isn't it? This is the gunshot. <laughs> this is it. This is the it's terrible, my gripe too, man. This I is got a one terrible too. scene. Uh, you've got an older woman in the front seat uh, and 
Yeah, Marion Chambers. The, <laughs> yeah, the and she's got a gun. Uh, doesn't know how to use it apparently, uh, because it's empty or it's on safety. Because Michael <laughs> walks up and <laughs> she's like, "This is for uh, what is she? she says? This is for this somebody. is for Doctor Loomis. Doctor Loomis, right? Which okay, you know, let's let's talk about Loomis again. Sure. Uh, and <laughs> click, click, click goes the gun, and Michael decides to stab her in the front seat. He gets in the driver's seat, reaches over yeah. and just stabs while the guy dressed also, up as a doctor. So there was a little. There was a little bit of a nod to Halloween 78 when he uh, smashes the window uh, oh, with on a the, wrench. on the passenger side? Yeah. Yes. Um, the same That's actress, the you know, so it's there. Uh, and guy in backseat who has a toy stethoscope because he's dressed up as a doctor decides, I'm going to choke Michael with toy stethoscope. Uh, <laughs> and he ends up getting brutally stabbed, like, up through the cheek, face, eye, yeah, it was bad. Uh, but then my favorite part of the whole movie <laughs> happens when Michael's sitting comfortably trying to drive away or sit in his car. Uh, gunshots ring out, uh, which miss him entirely. Hit windshield, hit door, hit hit roof, miss completely. Camera pans back and you see woman with big gun. <laughs> woman <laughs> with big gun dressed as nurse. Uh, Name's Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa, sure. Decides I'm going to shoot Michael, right? So she's laid out three, four bullets at this time. Uh, Michael is still sitting in car. Uh, door ajar, fully ajar. Uh, she begins to approach Michael closer and closer. Gets almost, I would say, door length away. That's the best way to put it. If you were to open a door, uh, legitimately and, door length away. Because yeah, what happens? So door is a jar. <laughs> is a jar at this time. Uh, Shoots the gun, aimed directly at Michael, and for some reason they decided to hard cut to the door being closed, which I slowed it down to watch to make sure. And he kicks wasn't the door. fully closed, but he kicks it open. Like, there's a inch of crack, if anything, <laughs> uh, and he kicks door open. It knocks into gun, which is being fired. Gun goes 180 and shoots herself in face. It's li it's literally the dumbest kill in a lot of horror movies that I've ever seen. The only way um, I can justify it is the supernatural sense of Michael. And I don't and want to justify ju that. No, that no, I refuse to let you justify this kill at all. It was it was bad. Well, um, technically it's it not was, a kill, it's a suicide. Sure. <laughs> it was bad. It was unrealistic, obviously. Um <laughs> Now, a lot of this is unreal. All of these kills are like slightly unrealistic. This is unrealistic. the worst kill yeah. in all of the new continuity. This is so yeah, far the it's, worst. It's bad. Um, it was bad. Anyway, uh, Lindsay does end up escaping, though. She does find um, Tommy or well, Tommy, Lonnie, Allison and Cameron end up finding Lindsay. The group um, sees uh, Marion, Vanessa, and her husband Marcus all, uh, you know, again, Michael is a showman. He wants to, he wants to display his work and they're all in the Halloween three masks. Um, you know, one is on the, the spin wheel and, you know, in the playground and the other is on a swing, uh, being held up and yeah, uh, pretty gruesome, pretty gruesome. And so the group actually do end up mapping out Michael's path and his victim's location and deduce that he is heading towards his childhood home. Um, and so Tommy takes Lindsay to the hospital, reunites with former Henfield Sheriff Lee Brackett. Again, another legacy character that didn't necessarily need to be in this movie. It, I understand, you know, though. That's okay. I'm okay. I understand it, but... But again, like his acting is not, he's, he's just yeah. not in acting form anymore. And th yeah. that's what really hurts this movie is that they're bringing in these legacy characters when they had the ultimate legacy character who is still good at acting in Laurie Strode. And that gets, that gets my blood boiling because yeah, I understand that Laurie was stabbed. She's down for the count. But her underutilization in this movie is its biggest travesty. Like, Lori needed to be used more. Um, she was recovering. I understand that's another that she's one of recovering. my gripes, though. My my gripes uh, from the beginning to the end of this film is one day, right? One day. Uh, yeah. There is no there is no time for recovery here. And through the entire first half of the movie, Lori is struggling to move 
let alone walk. Um, yeah. And then at the but end, like, it's a it's a clear cut opposite. But yeah, I mean, with, with like with Lori, you know, she is. Like this movie is a transitional movie where she was I felt that she was going to start preparing Allison for for these fights. Um, well, and you just don't get that. She's yeah, that underutilized. Yeah, she's underutilized <laughs> and Lori Lori just needs to Lori needed to be a bigger part of this movie, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Lee Brackett, uh, daughter Annie, was killed in 1978, so he knows all about Michael's uh, shenanigans. Uh, informs Lori about Michael's survival, um, so Lori now does know. Mm-hmm. Across town, Michael murders the current owners of his home as Lori prepares to leave the hospital. I've got um, a knife. <laughs> yeah, so this, this couple... Um, Michael McDonald Stewie from Mad TV. <laughs> They're they are they live in uh Michael's old home and Michael goes and That's yeah, okay with I, me. I, I'm okay with him going home. I don't home. have any problems with this. Yeah. I know I have I have I have no problems with him going home. It kind of shows like just he remembers where he was. He remembers he he's very his character is very deep, but he's also simple in a way that he his his only motive is to sort of rest and and like he wants to get back home mm-hmm. to to rest right um but you know in the in in the way are our people <laughs> so yeah. he's got to get rid of them <laughs> yeah uh funny funny characters uh i do like yeah. the creepy kind of like foreground background techniques they use to show michael creeping behind uh the the stars here in the, in the front of the camera mm-hmm. i like that uh that they don't even see it but we do uh, that really calls back to the original kind of stalking which i'm down with uh i just don't think they were formidable um enemies of michael i don't think they could well, have you know really they stood their ground yeah. they, they picked well, up that's, weapons that's the point of this movie thing, right but everyone that stood their ground against michael in this movie yeah. has been murdered uh, well, we yeah, that, I mean, that's the purpose, yeah. uh, you know, the, the purpose was to show him at his full strength. And then in Halloween ends, you get the final showdown with his only formidable opponent. And in, you know, both, I don't both know. Laurie Strode and, and Mr. Allison, Detective so we'll said some interesting stuff when he was on the ground at the beginning of this film. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see how need to do it. We'll see how Hawkins. Yeah, we'll see how Hawkins shows up in Halloween ends. But. Lance Tovely. Here's here's your favorite character and your favorite gripe with this whole movie. And I don't know, the gunshot's uh, pretty bad, but this one. is also pretty bad. So Lance Tovely, who is a fugitive convict from Smith Grove, is the other person that escaped the bus with Michael. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is the one that drove Vanessa's car and crashed it. He escaped. And he arrives at the hospital where this mob is being formed by Tommy Doyle. And they think that this five foot two Danny DeVito's penguin from Batman Returns looking fugitive is Michael Myers. Like, you're kidding. See, that's the problem with planting the seeds like in that first scene when you get that video of the emergency alert that planted that seed of Michael's news. Michael broke out. Here's a picture of someone that could be, you know, or was escaped. They didn't say this is Michael. They could have news broadcast could have easily said, watch out for a man in a white mask. This is this other guy that also escaped. If they have his yeah. picture, they definitely have his name. Uh they just chose not to do that, and that seed sprouted into this terrible, terrible chaos that's crossing yeah. the entire head. And uh, obviously, obviously, you are right. The commentary of this movie is truly mob mentality and how misinformation can create chaos. This, yeah. right? This, and you know, not not to mention that not you know. Not not several not not even two minutes later, this this guy who is running away from people, um, is is the is the victim of this mob because mm-hmm. he he commits suicide after Karen was actually going to try to help him. The second one in the film. Um, 
What? The second, the second suicide in this film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So he ends up jumping down, uh, from, uh, from a high story, uh, in the hospital and he, he kills himself because this mob, Michael has got this mob just going nuts and without any rationalization, uh, they're, they're not thinking clearly. They're not discerning clearly. And that's, that's really what the commentary is. It is this mob mentality, but I, I, I thought that it was, I thought that the, the killing of this guy was sort of out of place. I, I thought they could have used Karen's character a little bit more to, to sort of bridge the gap between this mob and just like telling them that this is not Michael. You see with, um, with the rational thinking uh, Karen here, uh, we, we had her finally realize he's not Michael. Right. And then he, she actually tries to stop the mob rational thinking, yeah. rational thought. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what they wanted to ex They wanted to show that is that this mob yeah. can't be stopped and they will do what they, what they want to get what they want, regardless to how much rational thinking is trying to pierce that evil thought seed that was planted a long time ago, the the rationality is out the window. If yeah. it's Michael, we're getting it. Even though it's not, they don't care. Yep. So Lori urges Karen to work with Tommy and Brackett to hunt Michael down. Elsewhere, Lonnie enters Michael's former home alone and is killed. Why did he go alone? That is, it was the, the question for another day. Next question. No discernment <laughs> from this group. Um, Allison and Cameron then rush inside and find his corpse before being attacked by Michael, who does murder Cameron. This murder was brutal. This was I'm probably all here uh, for it. my favorite, uh, like fight in this yeah. film. Uh, this was probably it. Mm -hmm. uh, more, more so than the firefighters, more so than the ending mob. Uh, oh, really? Okay. I think that this threw me back into the original Halloween. And that's what I liked about it. it. It brought that stalking, that brutality between two characters that we actually mm -hmm. kind of care about uh, back into the fold. And I like that a lot. So yeah. you, know, you get Cameron obviously being stabbed. That neck then, snap, dude. Uh, that neck snap. On the snap. stairs. It, I, think, oh, I think the weight so good. of her picking up the mantle and saying, come for me, come and get me, was a clear sign of like Lori fighting now. Uh, I think it was yeah. perfect. He comes down the stairs with that weight. You hear the footsteps. He stops because Cameron is still alive on his left side. His head is peeking out and yeah. he just uh, and then comes for uh, the next kill. So yeah. it's really good. I liked it. Um. Yeah. Awesome. So Michael actually prepares to kill Allison, who he threw down the stairs. Her leg is broken. Karen does appear and stab him in the back with a pitchfork, which is a, a it's a callback to Halloween five. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> So she ends up stealing his mask and taunts him to follow her. So she, she has his mask and we know that Michael has a certain connection with his mask. Uh, mm -hmm. It's pretty evident. I think hold up, that hold up. before we move on to this mob scene, sure. uh, the, the two men that were living in the Myers house, right? One of them thought it was prank people out in the front porch. Cause they're obviously made fun of. He goes out on the front porch with a golf club. And there is literally a pitchfork sitting next to him. It was a prop on one of the like Halloween mm -hmm. decorations. Why did he not take that? The world will never know. He chose well, to go with a golf club. Karen needed to grab it. Karen yeah. needed to grab it at the end of the so, movie. Uh, I'm going to sacrifice myself for the <laughs> golf club to help Karen survive. Uh, yeah, for longer. exactly. Okay. Um, for, <laughs> survive for longer. Oh, whoa. Slow yeah. down. Anyway, she does end up leading Michael into Tommy's mob who swarm attack and seemingly kill him. Um, Karen stabs him in the, like the, the top of the back. Yeah. Like right above the spine. Like, like why aren't you stabbing in the neck um, or in the, in the head? Um, again, people need to be smarter in horror, horror films. <laughs> Hopefully he'll end um, it right. So we'll find out. So, uh, they think that it's all done. Uh, Karen goes back to Allison. They, they end up, you know, getting help from paramedics and stuff like that. Mom kind of disperses a little bit. Michael ends up getting up. Um, so yeah, there, there has to be a little bit of supernatural in here, but like, I love that. 
I love that the supernatural is left up for interpretation instead of them like writing in, it in, in you now. know, such as the cult of the thorns. Um, yeah, I, I have, I have the, I have utmost faith that they will leave like full supernatural out of Halloween ends. I really do. I'd love for um, Sam and Dean to show up. They would take them out real quick. <laughs> um, Sam and Dean. Stop. Um, so anyway, this is another gripe that I had with the movie and maybe you disagree with me, but I thought when Michael recovers and he starts killing this mob, I don't like how they filmed it. It was the I, same as the firefighters. No, it wasn't. It was, it was like this, you know, just the characters on a black screen, you know, on a black background and just oh, the way that they cut it. And oh, the way, I, I the thought way you that meant it like was, the way that he was mobbed from a bunch of people and he still managed. To no, win. no, no. Like the, no, like the way that they, the, the way that they shot it. Like mm -hmm. I just, I didn't They like wanted it. to show that blood um, splatter that they just had to overdo through this film for some reason. I don't care about the blood. I, I just didn't like the design choice of how they, how they filmed that. But regardless, Michael recovers, massacres the remaining members of the mob, including Tommy and Brackett. So we will not get them back. Back at Michael's home, Karen goes upstairs to investigate while Allison receives medical attention. Michael ends up appearing. I don't know how he gets there um, through all of the chaos that is all these paramedics, but he does. He appears and stabs Karen to death in Judith Myers' old bedroom. So when I first, when I hospital. first saw this scene, uh, I thought this was a dream. I thought she was having a nightmare. I thought that she was still going to be too. alive. Uh, and turns out uh, that's not true. Uh, now, my next gripe in the film, uh, Lori is obviously <laughs> staring out of the hospital room, decides I need to call my daughter. Uh, so I'm going to go to the phone and call my daughter on an unknown number from the hospital. Phone is shown, pan, pan back next to her dead body, and apparently someone picks it up, unknown who, probably Michael, uh, knows how to use a cell phone, picks it up, and just breathes into the drive. microphone. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Ever since last night. Uh, so he, he obviously breathes into the microphone, and Lori is like, I'm going to kill you. I'm coming for you, Michael. Uh, really? Like, I, I just... I don't no, like to it. be to be fair, though, Justin, that is not in the original release. That is part of the extended cut. So they do That's not we have that here. part. That's what we were I mean, here. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, the, the only problem I have with it is what are they going to show at the beginning of ends? Like if that is if that is the true continuity well, of it, they showed her like, walking out of the hospital perfectly. Well, fine. Exactly. She got shoulder bumped from a from an employee. Did not whine, did not wince, did not fall over yeah. like she I did mean, through most Laurie of this Strode, film. Though. Like she's she is somehow managed to recover in one night. Yeah, uh, I mean that's that's not what I have gripes with. You know, I she's I have gripes people. with. True, but I I have gripes with it. They're doing a four year time jump going into Halloween ends. So what is? Really? Yeah, they are. So like, what what are they going to show at the beginning of the movie? of Halloween ends that's that brings us into that, that like that ending scene of Halloween kills. I'm not sure. Um, oh, I know. They'll, know do. So. they'll just, they'll start it off. They'll show the, the Halloween ends uh, title and then it'll just play Halloween three season of the witch. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll be all be bamboozled. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to your ratings. Halloween kills uh, scale one to five listeners. If you don't know our scale, five mm -hmm. is amazing. Four is great. Three is good. Two is okay. One is bad. Where are you sitting at with Halloween Kills? Unfortunately, I'm going to have to put this at a two. Uh, this is the lowest of the um, trilogy, I hope, uh, for the new continuity. Uh, two for it. Okay. It's not something you should avoid. If you're a fan of slashers, if you're a fan of Michael Myers, uh, Halloween in general, watch it. It's awesome. This continuity is great. There's just a lot of overacting or underacting on the sides of Michael. Michael, prime time. If you want to watch it to see Michael do what he does best, you will think this is a five film. But all that extra stuff just done poorly brought it down to a two for me, unfortunately. And the extra stuff brings it down to a three for me. I think this is a good movie because Michael bears so much of the weight of this movie. And mm -hmm. this is, you know, besides 2018, this is this is potentially the best version of Michael as far as as far as his 
ruthlessness and his evilness. Like that's what really saves it. The mask is great. Um, you know, that some of the characters within the mob are great, but a majority of things that are outside of Michael and his scenes don't really hit. And so that's why it brings it down to a good for me. Um, I will still, I still love watching this movie. Um, I really, I love Halloween and this is one of the most rewatchable ones out of the, all of the franchise, even though it has those issues. Um, so you heard it here two from Justin three from me. Let us know what you think of Halloween kills in the comments below on our YouTube video here or in a podcast review on a podcatcher of choice, specifically Apple podcasts. If you can, if you have the means to do that and stay tuned for our Halloween ends review coming next week. We're so excited. Me and Justin are seeing this tomorrow as of this release. Um, and so, yeah, we're super stoked to be reviewing the final one out of this trilogy, out of this new continuity. So until next time, my name is Mike. Follow us at what the fun pod on Twitter and Facebook. Follow Justin at rubber duck underscore 2,500. You can follow me at stay at home gamer where the Owen home is a zero. Again, my name is Mike. That's Justin. This has been what the fun show, our review of Halloween kills. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.